You know about 1980. You know that four BU Terriers were on the Olympic hockey team that year. But do you know about 1960, when Terrier Dick Rodenheiser helped the U.S. to its first ever ice hockey gold medal? Not being given a chance to win, it was, it was, it was thrilling. And it was just a group of, again, like in 80, a lot of ex-college players just uh, excelling when we had to excel. The USA wins 9-4, to four, skating through the Olympics without a loss in possession of their first Olympic gold medal. Next time you come to Walter Brown Arena, take a trip here to the All-America Honors Balcony, and you'll find a picture of Dick Rodenheiser from the 52-53 season. Seven years before, he would become part of the original Miracle on Ice. A miracle when you consider what Team USA had to contend with in its quest to conquer world powers Canada and Russia. So we came from the Boston area when there were only four artificial rinks in the area. The garden, the arena, the skating club, and the north shore of Lynn. So ice was really at a premium and we didn't have the exposure that kids have today. So it was a, it was a wonderful thing to be able to compete and to do as well as we did with the limited, limited facilities that we had at that time. The Americans earned a spot on the world hockey map with an Olympic upset of Canada, followed by a shocking victory over Russia that enabled the U.S. to advance to the gold medal game with Czechoslovakia. I remember uh, the puck being close to the Russian goaltender and, and Billy Christian poking it in for the go-ahead goal, which was very exciting for us because we hadn't been ahead of them very often, so we were extremely elated over that. The next day, Team USA would capture the gold with a come-from-behind win over the Czechs. In the entire Olympic Games, Rodenheiser played a key role as one of the squad's top defensive forwards. We were put on as a defensive line Paulie Johnson, Weldy Olson, and myself, and I, I, I think that's one of the, the, the things I'm most proud of, is that we, we, we performed our job and did not let them score to, to beat us. Despite that triumphant week in February of 1960, Rodenheiser's humble nature just won't allow him to boast of how skilled a player he really was. And the game is over, the United States wins! If I were in my prime, and I had to go out and play against these kids today, I probably wouldn't last one shift. True or not, what does last for BU's Dick Rodenheiser is a collection of golden memories that few athletes can match. For 68 Sports, I'm John Holtz.